This is a 1967 Marshall Super Lead 100 watt, also known as the Plexi. Now to be specific, this is a Black Flag JTM 100 from 67. Now I'm borrowing this amp from a friend of mine, Ford Fry, here in Atlanta, and I'm using it for another video on this channel about the three most important guitar amplifiers in rock and roll history. And I've been down here filming for the last hour or so, and I cannot get over how good this amp sounds, one, but two, how unbelievably loud this is. I it, It's hard to put into context, and so I'm gonna try and do that in this video. I'm gonna try and help you understand exactly how loud a 100 watt Marshall Plexi going through a 412 cabinet actually is. It's punishing. I'm also curious, I wanna see how this vintage Plexi stacks up against my new modern reissue from Marshall. I have a 1959 HW, which is uh, the modern reissue of the successor to this amp, the 68 Plexi, the JMP Marshall Super Lead. Now I can already tell after playing this one for the last hour that my amp sounds quite a bit different than this, but I wanna know exactly what's different about it, and I also wanna know how loud it is compared to the real deal. Can't believe people gigged with these, man. Like I, and this is just a half stack. I can't imagine a full stack and then having two or three of them on stage behind you. It's Okay, so the signal chain today is going to be the Plexi, both Plexis, going through my 412 cabinet. Now, this is the 412 OS cabinet, the Hendrix cab uh, that I bought a little over a year ago. It was broken, but I repaired it. And in that cabinet, I have a set of four Celestian greenbacks. These are the UK made greenbacks, so they're the proper speakers, so to speak. And a quick plug for my video courses. I've got a brand new video course uh, called Fretboard Fundamentals, Crafting Tasteful Solos. It's a lead guitar course, uh, a little over three and a half hours long. You can check it out in the description box down below. It's a great way to support this channel and help me finish the studio pill. I gotta buy more lumber to go down here. So check out a video course. <laughs> Someone put some new silver micas in there, but all the resistors are original. <laughs> it's, your, it's your main selector. See that? Yeah. So, oh, you can hear it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. You can smell it. <laughs> this is the joys of vintage Marshalls, man. Absolutely. Look, right here. It's actually Oh, arcing. it's arcing. Yeah. Oh, God. And it's in the limiter, so you okay. don't have anything to worry about. Okay, so we're back up and running. We are back up and running. Power on. Just match because real wall voltage is more like 122 to 125. 33, 30, 34 was the maximum I saw. So uh, 34 squared divided by eight. It's 144.5 watts. <laughs> So, and that's full frequency. That's not like 1K sine wave. So that is 100 watt Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 144 watts. Well, it's really funny because, you know, you, you think about like twin reverb is 100 watts. Yeah. But actually, it's a lot. It's less than. It usually reads about 85. Yeah. It's arbitrary. They pick 100 watts because it's a nice round number. And uh -huh. other people, every Marshall we ever check the wattage on is always at least 140 watts. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> okay, so I just got home from Acorn, um, got the amp set up, fired up, and immediately started red plating a power tube. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, me and this old Marshall are, uh, we're not getting along very well right now, but we're going to get to an understanding. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to get to a place where we understand each other and we have a good time because it sounds good and it's a beautiful old amp and it's got a great a great story and a great history and I'm just trying to share that. I just wanna make a video and I wanna share that your history and your story and your sound with the people. I wanna tell the people how great you are, but I can't do that if you keep
hear the ghosting in this. Listen. Uh, hear that like that low note underneath it? Right there. Listen. Ah. things that I've noticed so far with specifically the old amp, the Black Flag. It's much cleaner than I thought it was going to be. It definitely gets dirty and it has that super punchy Marshall grind thing, but you really have to have both channels pushed pretty hard to get there. It's mostly a clean amp. The other thing is once it hits a certain volume threshold, it doesn't seem to get much louder. It just gets more distorted and more compressed, which is you know, typical of guitar amps. They have a certain volume limit in terms of amplitude and then they just start to overdrive and compress more. The other interesting thing that I think is different about uh, the vintage amp versus mine is the tone stack. The EQ on the Black Flag is so powerful. It's so sensitive. Like the treble and, and presence controls really do a lot. The bass control actually controls quite a bit of low end. So it's actually a really useful EQ section that you could use to dial in the sound of this amp to a specific room, a specific guitar. And this amp does the thing that I love from big amps like this. And it's something that I can't capture in video form. You have to be in the room, standing in front of the cabinet to experience it, but I call it the thud. There's this percussive, low end, almost like a kick drum sort of effect on every note that you play, every note that you pick, every chord that you strum. As the transient of the note comes through the speakers, there's this low end punch that you can feel. It's like concussive. You can feel it in your chest. I'm noticing like, especially with the Les Paul when I'm playing the old amp, I'm picking harder. I'm playing more aggressively. I'm doing less legato style playing and I'm, I'm trying to pick every single note to, to pull out that low end punch kind of thing. So what I mean when I say that this sound, this amp, the sound that these Marshalls brought in the mid to late 60s, I think changed music, it changed rock and roll because it forces you to play to this sound. So I have a decibel level comparison chart here from Yale.edu. Uh, so according to them, 
normal conversation exists in around 60 to 70 dB. Um, city traffic is about 85 dB. A chainsaw at three feet away is 110 dB. Now, both of these amps, according to the dB meter on my phone, reached around 120 to 125 dB. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how accurate this is. It is just a, an app after all. But according to Yale, jet engine at 100 feet away is between 125 and 140 decibels. So according to my very rigorous scientific experiment here, we can somewhat confidently say that a 100 watt Marshall half stack dimed is in the same ballpark as a jet engine at 100 feet, according to Yale's DB chart. Now, another chart I found said pain begins at 125 decibels. A uh, pneumatic riveter at four feet is 125 decibels. At 140 decibels, even short-term exposure can cause permanent damage, loudest recommended exposure with hearing protection. Point is, these amps are incredibly powerful. I cannot imagine playing a gig with one of these as a full stack behind you on stage, let alone two or three full stacks behind you on stage and singing I, I just think it's unbelievable. I can't I can't wrap my head around that. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of comments like back in my day, man, we used to we'd never leave the house without a minimum of a hundred watt full stack. The Black Flag JTM has so much low end. It's it's like a bass amp, honestly. Like there's enough bottom end coming out here that it would compete with my Ampeg V4 with a P bass. It also does that thud thing that I was talking about, whereas my amp doesn't. In fact, I was a little disappointed, to be honest. I was expecting more of that kick to come from the 59HW, but it's just not there. It sounds good, but it's just a different thing. This is more gain. It's a little more fizzy sounding. It's got more of that top-end Marshall bite uh, than the Black Flag, but between the two, I prefer this. This has an amazing clean sound. It's got a really useful EQ section. EQ here is not nearly as, uh, as active. I have to say, though, the Black Flag JTM 100 is a special amp. Even after all the trouble it's given me this week, I get it. I get the vintage Marshall thing. Uh, this amp is great, but it doesn't do what this amp does. I guess this means I'm starting the hunt for an old Marshall now. I just want to give a huge thanks to my buddy Ford Fry for loaning me this amplifier. It's, uh, it's a big deal to let a vintage rare amp like this out of your possession, and uh, I appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Acorn Amps, Tyler and Bill down at Acorn Amps here in Atlanta. They absolutely saved my ass. Without them fitting me in yesterday and getting this thing back up and running, this video wouldn't have happened. If you're not hip to them, you should check them out down in the description box down below. They do some really great pedals like the Another Fucking Clon clone and the Solid State, which is amazing. Uh, and they're also a great follow on Instagram, and so is Ford. So check them out down below. And thanks guys for letting me do this video. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my new video course, the Lead Guitar Course, Crafting Tasteful Solos. Link is down below, as well as links to all my other video courses uh, and some of the gear that I use to make today's video. Some of those are affiliate links, which means if you buy something there, I earn a small commission, which again, helps support this channel, and I thank you. So thanks for watching. My name is Retchel. I'm gonna give my ears a break, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.